Dr. Robbie Davis Floyd, what is the main focus of your work these days? Midwives. <clears throat> I've been focusing primarily on midwives for the last 15 years or so. The first 10 years of my research, I focused on women, on birthing women, interviewing over 100 of them about their pregnancy and birth experiences, um, interviewing all kinds of women from the earthy types who wanted normal home births to the technocratic types who wanted scheduled cesareans. And um, after a while, I kind of reached redundancy with that. I pretty much heard about everything women could tell me, it seemed. And I had started being asked to speak at midwifery conferences at that point. And I kind of fell in love with midwives because I realized that they're really the only ones that actually can make a difference in childbirth. They're the only practitioners that make an effort to really give women, women a full spectrum of choice. <clears throat> so I got interested in midwives in all their dimensions all over the world. Thank you very much. And uh, Dr. Robbie uh, Davis Floyd, um, what uh, do you think is the main change, that, the main step that should be taken now in order to improve birth all over the world? What's the crucial thing? We have to reform the education of obstetrician gynecologists. <clears throat> they are the ones with the most power over the birth process, and their education misleads them terribly misleads them to think that birth is a dangerous process, that it's pathological, that it has to be treated with all kinds of interventions. Most obstetricians today never see normal birth in their careers. Most obstetricians never see birth without Pitocin, induction or augmentation, without epidurals, without uh, constant fetal monitoring, without IVs. They have no idea what birth looks like when you don't use any of that stuff. Most of them have never ever seen a birth out of, outside of hospital, nor would ever dream of doing so. So they learn all the wrong things because their teachers also have never seen normal birth. The generation before our current generation, at least, they had skills with forceps and with vacuum extractors and with hand maneuvers and with breech delivery. Those older obstetricians knew how to do things with their hands. So in the U.S. in 1970, the cesarean rate was only 6%. <clears throat> but by 1980, it had gone up to 23% because the fetal monitor got introduced into every American hospital during that decade. And with the advent of the monitor, doctors lost a lot of their hands-on palpation skills and also ultrasound. Many doctors don't even learn to palpate anymore. They wouldn't have a clue how to turn a baby. they just do a cesarean for breach. You know, so really the younger generation of doctors, they're being de-skilled or really never skilled in the first place in their training and they're learning a risk-based, fear-based model of birth that doesn't allow them any possibility for imagining any other way to do birth because they never see it any other way. So midwives need to become the instructors of obstetricians because obstetricians are probably always going to have the power, but obstetricians need to learn how to understand, identify, appreciate, and facilitate normal birth, and let midwives be the guides and guardians of normal birth, while obstetricians reserve themselves in their high-tech skills for the truly dangerous and pathological cases. Obstetricians should be the heroes of the hospital, swooping into rescue when rescue is truly needed and keeping their hands off the rest of the time. And they will never do that unless they're educated in what normal birth is and how it's midwives who are best trained to facilitate normal birth. Of course, obstetricians should also have the skills for facilitating normal birth but because in order to understand how to do it. But mainly, they should know it, but they should turn those, those jobs over to midwives. They could stay in bed longer if they did that. You know, <clears throat> and midwives and obstetricians should work together in collaborative practices with obstetricians backing up the midwives and handling the, the cases where surgical skills are really needed and allowing the midwives to facilitate, guide, and guard the normal process of birth. Thank you very much, Dr. Robert Davis Floyd. And um, regarding this uh, coming uh, World Doula Day and week, we will be celebrating uh, this coming in March. Um, have you got a special uh, message for doulas all over the world? Yes, I do. The doula movement is large and growing. Um, there are doula movements being spawned in many countries every year. There, another country gets doulas for the very first time. There has been criticism of doulas in my country that all they do is make women happy about bad birth experiences. But the truth is, and they actually do, doulas do do that, I would rather have a doula making a mother feel good about a bad experience than not have the doula there at all. <clears throat> so I applaud doulas, I celebrate the role that they play in 
facilitating women's birth experiences and supporting women psychologically, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Midwives often don't have the time to do what doulas do for mothers. It's important for doulas to understand that the doula effect, as it's known scientifically, only holds if the doula is in the continuous presence of the mother through the entire labor. I mean, she can go to the bathroom and maybe grab a bite to eat, but if you rupture that energetic web that, that forms itself between mother and doula, too often or for too long, the doula effect does not hold across statistical studies. <clears throat> so it's very important if you're gonna be a doula, commit to being there with the mother hands-on for the entire time. Go to the bathroom if you need to, because if you're holding it in, that'll just hold back the birth. <laughs> but celebrate yourselves for the wonderful job you're doing taking care of mothers. Thank you very much. And uh, one last question. Question, uh, Dr. Robbie Davis Floyd. Have you got a message for the Israeli uh, birth uh, facilitators for uh, midwives, childbirth educators, doulas? Um, in Israel, the birth community? Yes, I do. You guys, get your act together. You are a small nation with a centralized healthcare system in which changes can be effective, affected, accomplished if everyone galvanizes behind a certain set of goals. There is, Israel has a very liberal policy with surrogacy, for example, you know, <clears throat> but it's very medically conservative with birth. Well, small countries are easier to change than big, huge ones like the one I live in. So, you know, if everybody could figure out what the humanization of birth means in Israel and make a, a and join together to collaborate, doctors, midwives, doulas, nurses, you know, get your act together, create a functional, cohesive, coherent system for the benefit of the mothers and babies of your country. Thank you very much, Dr. Robbie Davis Floyd. It's been a pleasure to have you tonight. Thank you. Thank you, it's my pleasure. <laughs> Perfect, thank you All very, right. very much. Good. Great.